I tried not to do this, actually. I tried not to be an artist at one point because I knew that it was, it's such a strange thing to do. I think I spent about nine months trying not to make art. I was probably the most miserable I've ever been in my life. My, my fingernails seemed to itch because I wanted to make work so, so badly. That was really the point when I knew that I just had to do this thing. I just had to make stuff because if I couldn't make stuff, then I didn't feel like I had a purpose. I can't remember when I started painting because I've always painted. I remember I got my first acrylic paint set when I was about eight or nine years old. And I remember my first painting was a still life of flowers. And I remember thinking, I love looking at the reflection of the flowers in the, in the water of this vase. I think architecture really inspired me during my senior year in Italy. I went to Rhode Island School of Design and RISD has a, a school in Rome. And I traveled around with my sketchbook and I recorded buildings and piazzas and palazzos. I went to cathedrals, churches. I really started to become interested in day-to-day -day life, which included the architecture of my surroundings. When I returned from Rome, I graduated from RISD and um, moved right to New York. I knew that I wanted to live in New York. At first, I thought I was going to do landscape or portrait. I kept being drawn to the rooftops and the old New York, the fire escapes and the water towers, Soho, Tribeca, Little Italy. I was searching for something that sort of had a nostalgic feel. That kind of architecture really inspired me. I think I still have my first water tower painting, but I remember painting it thinking, oh, this has everything. It has architecture, but it also has an organic quality, and it has light that shines through, and it has a beautiful uh, silhouette. I think about the same concepts no matter what my subject matter is, whether it be a rural landscape or a cityscape, a, a portrait, an interior. Those ideas are very intuitive. I'm just thinking about pieces of color and pieces of light and shadow that form a whole picture. Every brushstroke defines a form. There's no haphazard brushstroke. Everything has a purpose. Color is one of the most important things about my paintings. I always look for a pop of color, maybe a red or something warm. And the other thing that's so important is the composition. So I don't just go for a, a nice scene like this. I'll always look for an interesting point of view and some kind of perspective that's very dramatic. Over the years, my style has changed. I've become more unafraid. I've become bolder. Bolder with everything that I'm trying to convey. I think overall, as I've matured as an artist, I feel more free to express myself. The experience of recording where I am, it's very exciting and very personal to me. I'm always looking for places that speak to me. It may be just a small snippet of life. If I can show people the beauty that I see before me is worth looking at, maybe they'll want to look at it too. How about I make something that shows you something beautiful that you might not have noticed? Maybe that's my purpose. I think for artists, we may be constantly asking ourselves, why are we doing this? But I know that if I, if I don't do this art making, then I don't feel like there's a purpose. And I think my purpose is to make paintings, make drawings, and make people see 